Worst stocks of the year so far. We're close to the middle part of the year, Mikey, and I wanted to drill down on some of the asset classes that are performing poorly and then drill down even further on some of the single names that are performing poorly within those asset classes. Right off the bat, do you just, uh, from your trading, uh, call it anecdotal evidence, what markets do you think are some of the worst of the year? They could be stocks or they could be anything else. Uh, well, definitely Bitcoin products, which uh, is, should be no surprise to anyone. But I think I think the sell-offs in a lot of those products have been so aggressive. Um, and the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. If, if you were betting on these products rising because they were involved in tech, or you thought you know the landscape of tech might be shifting, like your Zooms and your your Roku's of the world, or even Netflix, um, you have this kind of mass liquidation effect where those people that were betting on the future of these products now see that the stock is coming down. And then those people that were kind of the speculators are now also pulling out of those stocks, which kind of helps the downside pressure in a bad way. And I think that's what you're seeing in a lot of these tech stocks, Bitcoin stocks, uh, and a lot of these other sectors that have been poor performers through the year so far. Yeah. And I want to get to that because you, you illuminate that idea very, very well, which is like the compounding effect. Like mm -hmm. if you're a tech stock, it's bad. If you're a crypto, it's bad. If you're a tech stock in crypto, holy smokes, it's been a rough year so far. But I do, you, you also, there was a really nice nugget in there, which is the expectation. And it made me think of like, if you rewind six months ago and Bitcoin is 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 traveling right around 50k give or take you know 5 or 10k um the the idea from a lot of people's perspective is the next stop can be 100 like that's mm -hmm. if I'm going to buy Bitcoin on Jan 1 at 50k 100 is where I'm looking for this year and that expectation we know as options traders futures traders it, it's two sided you know, and so, like, in the same way that if I was looking for the year long strangle in Bitcoin, and I'm saying the call is at 100, the put is probably at, you know, 10, 20, or 30K. And so we're just seeing that downside here. And we know these markets can move so much that maybe it does get back to 50 or even the upside of the projected range from the year's start uh, by the end of 2022. Definitely markets like these can gain steam in either direction. But I just thought that was really interesting that a lot of people calling for the 100K level in Bitcoin and maybe caught off guard by this move lower. But I, I think as traders, you and I, and, and a lot of people else uh, around options are kind of equipped for, yeah, you, like it, there is a, a symmetry to upside and downside. And I would say we're probably close to the downside of what would have been that projected range at the year's start. Here's performance since the year's start. And you can see sticks being technology stock uh, futures, BTC being Bitcoin futures, and then SCCX being technology crypto uh, futures in there. It's a rough chart for everybody, but especially if you're one of those crypto stocks. Been cut in half this year, Mike Butler. I know it's crazy. It's crazy to see these lined up, and it's crazy to see like Bitcoin being the one that actually sustains in this <laughs> in this graph, where it's like it feels like it definitely has not, um, but. I think there's a lot to be said about potential opportunities for these stocks if you think they're going to recover, um, not only because like we're seeing here, the, the tech stocks that are in the Bitcoin realm have just been obliterated. But if you believe Bitcoin is going to go from 30K to 100K, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but whatever the time frame is, you have to believe that a lot of these stocks that are either heavily invested in Bitcoin or heavily associated with Bitcoin um, with the, the chip the chip game, uh, the chip miners, things like that, uh, I think there is some opportunity out there if you think these stocks will withstand the storm, which is the question. And, and actually, we, we uh, already kind of hit on that exact idea, which is like symmetry in risk and reward with a lot of these markets. And so if everything is down and it's May, and I think that everything will bounce back, well, it's very likely, given that symmetry of risk and reward, that the most volatile pieces to the downside, uh, i.e. crypto stocks, 
will be the most volatile pieces to the upside if everything does bounce back in a perfect world there. And I want to give two stories right now of worst markets of the not so distant past energy. And this is what I love to bring up just because this happens every year, everybody. Every year, there's one or two markets where everybody's like, that market's over with, it's completely dead. You know, like d- don't invest. If you've got investments in there, liquidate immediately. Um, and this was energy. This was energy in, you know, 2018, 19, and 20 as well. That's where we really saw the lows in there when the pandemic kicked in and, and people were like, oh, we're not using, you know, gas or fi- like we're not going to use this stuff ever again. And, and Exxon is, is going to go to, to free and, and all this different stuff. And this market has bounced back better than any stock sector since the pandemic. I mean, that's a huge, huge bounce back from being down 70%. And you can remember when everybody had, had written off energy, right? Yeah, totally. And it's it just speaks to, again, not, not necessarily thinking of how crazy this sell-off has been and, and the fear, but also the opportunity if these things prevail the test of time. And uh, I think some of them will. Some of them will probably go away. And uh, that's going to be the, the game going forward is figuring out which ones might not and which ones might. And yeah, this is a perfect example of ones that have just been uh, not have not recovered from the sell off uh, initially. And, and I'm glad you prove uh, to, to withstand the test of time is like a great way to think about this stuff. Because with energy, I definitely felt a lot more confident. It's like these are companies that have been around for, in some cases, a century, like uh, mm-hmm. really, really have a diversity of um, you know operations. They do a lot of things and they have enough money and infrastructure to shift uh, to you know renewable resources and everything else in the energy space. Cannabis we haven't seen it. And so this can absolutely go this way as well. Um, the only thing that I would say in this uh, side of things is as the, the market gets so low, it does lose some of that downside steam where it's almost like, man, they were really coming off here in the early part of 2021, still moving lower in latter part of 2021. And now they're not higher, that's for sure. They're actually at their lows, cannabis stocks. But they're not seeing as much velocity to the downside. You can only pound a market so hard uh, consistently here. But I got to show that because, yeah, these markets don't all bounce back. They got to withstand the, the, the test of time. And with that being said, here are your you know some of your worst performers of the year so far. Uh, and, and it's surprising to see Coinbase, a, a, a company, a stock there that's that seems to at least be a little bit more bulletproof than uh, some of those other smaller market cap names, but that one down 72%. And this is one, uh, Mikey, where I probably wouldn't want to pick just one of these. I would either pick a handful of them or buy the SECX uh, futures to hopefully get on the other side of this uh, worst performance. Uh, What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's going to be really tough um, the, it, the more you concentrate, the more you run the risk of uh, being involved with the one product or a ha- the handful of these products that might not withstand the test of time or might not go back to where they were before. Um, but I think there's things to be said about a lot of these, like micro strategy stands out to me as like the one that is probably going to rebound the most if Bitcoin rebounds, rebounds in an aggressive way, hmm. just because Michael Saylor is such a crypto crazy person. Uh, But I know that they, and one thing you can look at is like, what are these, what of these products have either taken a ton of their cash and invested in Bitcoin, or they're just so heavily involved in Bitcoin that there's just no way they're they're not going to rally back if Bitcoin does get back to 60K, 70K. Uh, But then you have like your PayPal's and Squares, your payment processing systems where they've been destroyed as well, not nearly as much as your coins and your Maras of the world. Um, But these are the, those are the companies where like, I see those companies having a hard time going away. Exactly Um, right. Exactly right. Where I I think it's funny to see PayPal so far down the list of worst performers that you think, man, they're so big. I can't see this thing really going away. And I I don't think it's going away, but it does, it gets at that idea of like, if you were picking stocks and you were like, PayPal, that's the one with the least risk because it is so big. 
and so diverse. It's down 55%. So I don't necessarily want to be picking stocks here with thankfully SCCX futures. You get a little piece of all of them without the specific risk of one of them. And uh, that's definitely a market you and I have both been in uh, here long is the small crypto futures. So make sure you take a look at that. Mr. Butler, we are over time here. We need to get out of Dodge before Pete Molmat and everybody gets mad at us. Thank you so much. Make sure you're checking out Mike Butler on Twitter and the rest of the shows he does here on Tasty Trade. He is absolutely tops. And everybody, thanks so much for watching us here on Monday afternoon. Small Stakes, we'll be back with more small exchange content tomorrow. Until then, stick around for Splash into Futures coming up next. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.